Welcome to Obsession Engineering and welcome back to the 1998 R1 project. Now, there have been a few little teething errors with the bike. Uh, the dashboard occasionally went a bit mental, which I traced to a bad earth on the radiator. And there were a few little bits where it didn't really want to run quite right and hunted a lot at tick over. But I think I've sorted all that now. So the only thing left to do really is actually go and ride it. With Adam giving chase on the Twono, it was time to set off across some of our favourite Lincolnshire roads to see what's good, and maybe not quite so good, about the R1. If you were wondering what I did to finally make the R1 actually run properly, I adjusted the throttle position sensor, which made only moderate difference, and then I adjusted the pilot air screws a bit more, and that made considerably more difference. So we're now three and a half turns out on the pilot screws, and the bike is pretty darn good. In Lincolnshire we're blessed with a selection of excellent roads. They're nice and fast and flowing and in places nice and open and occasionally we even see some traffic. Luckily the R1 has no problem dealing with traffic. To make it a thorough road test we did of course use as many different types of road as possible. So we had nice fast flowing A roads and B roads and then we had some considerably bumpy little back roads as well. With a few miles under our belts we thought we'd pull over for light refreshments and have a bit of a reflection on what we liked about the bikes. So we've been riding for a little bit now and we're up at Guy Martin's pub in Kermington at the Marabone and Cleaver. So we've stopped for light refreshments. Adam's is obviously 50% vodka because he's a real man. Yep. And a little bit of reflection on the first bit of the ride. The R1 in general is actually really quite nice to ride. When I first rode it, I complained a little bit that it didn't want to turn very well, just so the initial turning wasn't very crisp. Uh, but since then, I've put three millimetres in the bottom of the shock on the ride out adjuster on the Olins, and that's just given it a little bit more height and shortened the trail a little bit in the front, and it's much better. So it now actually turns nearly like a new bike. Um, the suspension quality is lovely. That's probably its standout feature between that and the engine because the engine's lovely and smooth um, in only really the way that a big fourth of the carburetted engine can do uh, hmm. yeah it's pretty good isn't it yeah when I had it out the other day it was uh, lovely yeah apart from you have to keep looking at the speedo yes this is one thing with modern 1000cc bikes and I mean this is over 20 years old but I'm still classing it as a modern litre bike they are that fast, that easily, that you can't really thrash them on the road, because if you do start thrashing them on the road, you're going very, very fast. And because it's so smooth, it does it so easily, it is very easy to be going a little bit over the speed limit and not really noticing. And there's a load of offshore blokes sat in a helicopter looking down on us, wishing they were sat in a beer garden with motorbikes. A uh, couple of little foibles with the R1. Um, normally when I fill a bike up with petrol I zero the trip meter so I know how far I've done on a tank of fuel and after you've ridden a bike a bit then you know when you're about to run out. Uh, the trip meter on the R1 resets every time you turn the ignition off which is a little bit annoying but apparently they are prone for doing that. Uh, I do now have a working temperature gauge which is almost irrelevant because it's got a fan switch anyway. Um, the, the brakes aren't spectacular they work perfectly well and now they don't judder it's a bonus but they're not that powerful uh, compared to the trono that adam's chasing me on the, the, trono, the trono brakes are considerably <laughs> better um but it does look rather nice in the sunshine um i suspect the aprilia is a little bit more comfortable a lot more yeah to be honest the r1 isn't bad at all uh, being a sports bike you are a little bit on your wrists uh, but because it's fairly big it's not bad um, I have reasonable leg room I mean the tank does slope backwards into me knackers a little bit but it's alright because I, I like you know they unclip like Lego uh. so I'll just put them in a jar at home because I know it'll be uncomfortable otherwise and I mean I don't actually need them for the next you know couple of hours Okay. <laughs> because as much as I enjoy your company, Adam. What? What are you trying to say? There is one thing about the R1. Yes. Which is 
come off the Tuono mm. and it's got a really, really kind of small gear change. Which, really I, did, which I did on purpose because otherwise it's the longest gear change is, in the world. Which is really, really good and I like it. And then you go on to the R1 and the gear lever seems to be really tucked in under the bike. Interestingly, yes, I have noticed that today. It's, as you're riding, you have to like move your, your foot in, like rotate your leg round to change gear every time. Hmm. And you look at it at standstill, and the gear lever looks a normal length. It sticks out from the bike, a normal length. But for some reason, you have to dislocate your knee every time you want to change gear. Oh, yeah, I don't get it. Luckily, what you could do is put the bike in third or fourth gear and never change gear again, because it is oh, was that. quite talky. Mm. Not as talky as the Tono. Ah, I think the difference is it has more rev range, because it'll, mm. it'll, it'll pull from like, two, 3,000 RPM to 11 and a bit. So you've got a good usable rev range. So it will go anything from booting through town to far too fast for the road <laughs> in one gear. Mm. Position. Right, in fact, this is a bit I was thinking while we were riding around. So listen, this is important. Um, I've had quite a lot of bikes from the 90s. Several ZXR 750s. You, you, you own a lot of bikes from the 90s still. That is true, yes. turning up at my house, someone else's garage, your parents. The workshop. The workshop. The Fox brewers. Places. Yeah. 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 So, right. <laughs> and over the years then, I've owned and still owned quite a lot of bikes off of the 90s. And there's a sort of running theme with all of them that the Japanese test riders must have had incredibly short legs but incredibly long arms because they're all stretched out like that but with your feet somewhere just above your butt butthole. Mm -hmm. which and you ride them and go well this isn't terribly comfortable and there's a reason for this because it used to be engine carburetors airbox and then like the subframe and everything behind it so the tank had to be quite long to sit over everything mm. but then basically when that came out Yamaha went right engine they stacked the gearbox and then they moved the carbs up a bit and then they put the airbox basically on top of the engine a lot more like a modern bike Hmm. Whereas most of the things in the 90s, instead of being there, it was there. So all of a sudden, you could have the tank a little bit higher, but it didn't have to come as far back to cover everything. Yeah. And so it actually feels more modern to ride. And it isn't, you know, bang up to date, obviously. But... It still goes as good. Yeah. Compared to a modern big sports bike, the handlebars are a little bit more set in, like the 90s. But it isn't that far to the handlebars, but you've got reasonable leg room. So, when people said, like, in 1998 when they came out, and everybody went, oh, it's the, it's a revolution. And having owned a couple of 90s Fireblades, well, I still have, um, yeah, you ride that, and it rides like a new bike 23 years later. You ride a Fireblade that came out two or three years before it, and it rides like a 25-year-old bike. They're very good, but they show their age a lot more. Yeah. So I can understand why in 1998 that was a revolution. Fun. Yes. That's why you go out on the roads and ride around. Yes. Because it's fun. But the problem with that is... That. <laughs> because yeah. everything that that does... <laughs> in effect, that does it as well, if not better... With more noise, a bit more character, better brakes, and in more comfort. <laughs> so which one are you taking home? Both, they're both no, fine. No. As in riding home, you keep going, that's really good and nice, and but then you've got that which is brilliant compared to, so. Yeah, well I'm gonna keep riding that because- Excellent it's choice. Because it's new and shiny to me. Yes. Uh, and you keep riding around on that because I've ridden that loads. <laughs> I, I, I still ride around on that with a big beaming smile. And going, like I say, down around the twisties where it doesn't feel like a monster bike mm. and heavy and horrible and it just pivotals around and you go, this is great fun. And you're laughing all the way around the twisties. Yes. It's brilliant. And being as I've coached on track days on it mm. and it's very good at that and it'll sit on a dual carriageway in comfort making a bit of a noise it's not brilliant through town because it's fairly big and fairly lumpy but it'll do it yeah. yes that 
that weirdly the ugliest bike I think I've <laughs> ever owned is possibly actually the best road bike I've ever owned. After our refreshing afternoon drink, we hit the road again. We did a little bit of boring dual carriageway and then we checked our passports and headed into Yorkshire. After a little tour around Yorkshire, we headed back across the water into Lincolnshire. Some excellent roads just south of Goole and then a little fuel stop before they run back towards Lincoln. Possibly the biggest compliment I can give the R1 is that it actually rides quite like a new bike. And considering this is a 23-year-old bike and an appreciating classic, that really is high praise. It's fair to say that the R1 is lovely to ride, but I always had that sneaking suspicion that the man chasing me on the Twono may have been having just as much fun in somewhat more comfort. So me and Adam have been out all afternoon on the R1 and Adam has been trailing around behind me on the Twono that I've been riding around on all year. And this bike is very, very good. There are some sort of standout features. The engine is lovely, it's lovely and torquey, it's so smooth. So if you're into a nice quick corner especially, you can just crack the throttle open mid-corner, the throttle connection's really nice, and you can just get an awesome drive through the mid-range of the bike. The engine is great. It is actually slightly frustrating that you can't really use all of its potential on the road because you'd just be going too fast and men in uniform would come and chase you and it would not go well. The other bit I especially like is the suspension quality. The, uh, the ride is still sports bike firm, but it has that sort of slight plushness that you only get from good quality suspension. And as you're flicking it through corners, it just so composed, it doesn't wallow, it doesn't pitch too much. It just sort of sits and does exactly what you want. So those are the two outstanding features of it. Um, it's pretty good for comfort. There's reasonable leg room, but it is a sports bike. So you are on your wrists quite a lot. Um, the gearbox is okay. Once you pass second gear, it's actually quite nice and smooth, but first to second is decidedly clunky. Um, but there is a bit of a problem. I mean, aside from the taco sort of flaps around like an old flappy aroundy thing. Um, and it's that Adam's been following me all day on the Twono. And as a road bike in traffic, through villages, down bumpy roads, anywhere basically that isn't continual corners going quite quickly, the Twono is better. And when you get to the bits where this bike's really, really good, the Twono's still really, really good. So what started off as a review of how nice this R1 is, has actually turned into how great that Twono is. So don't get me wrong, I am lucky enough that I have both of them. This is lovely. If you park them side by side, this will get all the looks. Because it's lovely. And it's got shiny gold things on it. And it is, you know, an appreciating classic. It does actually have that advantage of, it will never lose me money. Especially because I didn't actually pay very much for it. So, if you're in the market for a classic bike that you want to be able to ride quite quickly down a selection of nice roads, these things are great. Spend some money on suspension, keep it looking fairly original, and you will have a wonderful bike that won't lose you any money. If you actually want to go out and have a ride around on something that's just great, without the compromises, I quite suggest an old Aprilia Twono. Thanks for watching the R1 project, and join me again soon for some more motorbike fun.